Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to an honest to goodness airsoft vlog video. It's been far too long since we've done one of these. I did envisage this series being uh, a lot more regular than it's actually transpired to be. I thought it would be a nice little uh, peek into my daily airsoft life, uh, a behind the scenes, if you like, of the channel, that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, it hasn't really worked out that way, has it? But I will envisage to try and do a bit more with it in the future. The other thing I'm going to apologize for now is this. My now seemingly awkward attempt to stare endlessly at the camera. And that is because uh, we are nearing the 800 subscriber mark. Thank you very much for everyone who has participated in that. I would, however, like more. We're always looking to grow the channel. And as such, I've started looking at a few of these how to grow your channel videos uh, here on YouTube and that kind of thing. And uh, a common piece of advice is to constantly maintain eye contact with the camera and therefore you the viewer even when it becomes really really obvious and awkward like this that i am desperately trying to maybe i'm not blinking enough yeah and this awkward silence will help as well but anyway uh suffice to say what they advise is or what they advise against is what i tend to do a lot and i am conscious of it is sort of look down to the right, look to the left, that kind of thing, you know, maybe maybe look to the side of the camera or look at whatever I'm holding. And uh, the advice given is that looking away from the camera makes you appear distrustworthy. And we wouldn't want that because uh, I'm here to, to gain your trust. Uh, that sounds almost predatory, doesn't it? No. Um, okay, let's just go back to looking down at the floor, shall we? Let's get on with the video today, and I am looking to kill two birds with one stone. Please, YouTube, don't flag me up for using the word kill. Um, we are not in any way making a snuff video. Right. Uh, the two things we'd like to tackle today, we, mm, uh, I, would like to tackle. This is not going well at all, is it? Is, of course, this, the AAP SRU... PDWK kit along with these tasty little iron sights that I've acquired as well and this is because I am pleased to report here on the Pew Pew Paladin uh, platform both here uh, and on Instagram and stuff like this we are now a supported channel. Now, some of you will be aware that uh, for uh, some time now we've been supported by our good friends over at SRU uh, I wear a lot of their armor and that kind of thing. And now we're getting a few of their kits through as well, courtesy of SRU and uh, yeah, working in partnership with them, which is fantastic. And the new partner to the channel as well is actually Fayashi. And I've probably butchered the, the pronunciation of that. Uh, they're a, a fairly new company on the scene. They make budget components for us airsofters although they shouldn't be taken as budget they are extremely high quality they are just budget friendly uh, so they've sent me these iron sights uh, for my consideration here on the channel and will be sending me some of their other products in the future as well uh, torches uh, other optic setups that kind of thing as well which they deal in and they're available on amazon I encourage you to check them out, see what they've got, and we will be working our way through their product line here on the channel as well. So as I say, two birds with one stone. This is not a review of either one of these. These blog videos tend to be a bit more behind the scenes, just taking an overall look at things and uh, giving my initial impressions. So that's what we're going to do here today. So without further ado, let's take a look at the PDWK kit. Now, a few of you would have seen this already if you are one of the several hundred who have watched the AAP video. Again, thank you for that. For those of you who haven't watched it, I shall place a link somewhere here now. Um, but suffice to say, uh, this turns your Bogo standard AAP-01, which is a very, very capable pistol, into an absolute monster. 
this is basically now in this configuration to all intents and purposes a, a fully fledged SMG extended mags we have the capability to uh, mount additional mags in here as well so we can carry two extended mags on this thing for quick change purposes uh, it will take standard magazines in there as well fitment is very very taut in there as well um, it's a very tight fit and uh, you don't have to worry about your mags falling out or anything like that which is nice and like I say we are MP9 MP7 SMC9 capable of taking these things on uh, no problem at all arguably a little bit vector-esque in its design but it is superbly thought out as with all things sru they thought of everything here they've catered to turning this into a, a fully fledged little smg but it's not heavy it really isn't you can one hand wield this thing all day and it feels sort of like a well as with a lot of things, SRU feels very space age, very futuristic. Um, you you can imagine yourself on the Halo battlefield, that kind of thing. No problems at all with this thing. But it's the attention to detail I like, as with all things SRU. We have a lot of uh, stylized design cues in here that would look really nice. If you were to sand this and prep it and paint it up, it, it would look fantastic. It really, really would. But... It's the attention to detail, it's uh, where they've thought of things uh, that uh, really make the difference here. Things like how the, the stock extends um, and comes out to multi-positions, that kind of thing. Uh, really, really shoulders nicely, incredibly rigid, incredibly sturdy, more so than, you know, something you get on an MP9 and that kind of thing as well feels really, really well put together. And for something that's 3D printed, incredibly, incredibly strong. Um, they also, as you can see, if I just, if I had two hands, it would be easier. Uh, they have QD sling points built into it at the rear on both sides as well. The nice feature as well, which uh, you may see in a little clip I've put up, is that they've left enough room that the standard AAP zero one holster can still work with this as well it's not too wide all still clicks into place so it can actually use their quick retention system although it does feel a little bit cumbersome on the thigh i, I would say probably it's best to hip mount this thing if you were going to go down that route in terms of rail space we've got plentiful options uh, monolithic rail across the top which of course we have these iron sights on at the minute uh, it will take a fully fledged optic as well, as you've seen in the video. We have uh, space for torches, pec boxes, that kind of thing. A little bit of space if you wanted to mount a sort of vector-esque foregrip at the front. And uh, in this meat tenderizer bit, which if this meat tenderizer isn't to your liking in terms of aesthetic, don't forget this is all 3D printed. You can A, unscrew it, although it's going to leave you with it a bit exposed. I would actually, if you don't like it, take some sandpaper to it and, and just rub it down till it's nice and smooth and flat. They've also left enough room here. You'll see that I've, I, I've taken the thread protector off the front of my pistol. Because uh, if you're running something small, like a proper little pistol tracer, something like uh, an Ace Tech Brighter C, something like that, that will fit down in there. I will point out, when you first get this thing, that hole is machined to the exact size of an Ace Tech Brighter C, and thus it is a very, very tight fit. There's there's a lot of friction involved in, in trying to push it down. Uh, so again, if you're gonna smooth off the front anyway, and you've got sandpaper available, a little bit of wet and dry, and just, just run the wet and dry around the edge, take another mill out of it uh, and just make your life a lot easier you don't want to scratch up your, your brighter C going in there so tracers are a real option with this thing as well uh, we have the the ejection port it has been left uh, plentiful in size so that you can still get your finger down inside to uh, adjust the hop up and that kind of thing probably not a gloved finger wouldn't be best but uh, you know whatever 
Uh, and the charging handle as well uh, has plenty of room and uh, fits straight on when you put the pist as you put the pistol in. Really, really nice to see this thing reciprocating back by the side of your face as you're firing it off and that kind of thing as well. Makes a very, very satisfying set of noises because you get all this uh, uh, the the audible nature of the pistol almost ver reverberates inside the kit, so it makes it that much louder. Uh, a bit more visceral, if you like. Uh, the, the the one slight downside I've seen with putting it in this kit, unlike some of the other AAP setups you get out there on the market where they leave it a bit more uh, sort of open-ended, because this is all screwed in and we have this, you know, sort of Chris Vector sort of styling to it, you will need to uh, remove that bolt and that bolt to take the pistol out to service it. And, and all that sort of nature not a big deal um but yeah that's the the only slight downside i can see there's a bit more involvement when it comes to stripping the pistol down taking it back out again uh as far as still being able to upgrade the pistol longer barrels stuff like that uh yes there is enough room uh internally here that you could run an extended barrel even out the front here, I wouldn't leave it too far out the front. It, maybe put a tracer on the edge just to protect it. But you could certainly uh, add a, a, a fair amount of barrel length to it as well with no problem. Uh, but yeah, really, really good. I'm very, very impressed with this kit thus far. Like I say, I, I will hold off doing a full review until we actually get skirmished a couple of times. Because I have only used this in controlled environments. But... Uh, yeah, super impressed with it thus far. Uh, the other thing to talk about is the Feashi iron sights. As I say, this is a, a new a supporter of the channel. Sent me these iron sights. These are, in fact, fiber optic iron sights. You can see we have green fibers and red, red fibers. And I found these to be very satisfactorily indeed. Uh, they're a nice little upgrade on the sort of standard iron sights you tend to get thrown in with your rifles. Uh, they lock into place once they're up and you can see there's a little uh, button to depress here which will allow you to fold them back down and lock them into place for, for traveling, that kind of thing. Or if you have a, another optic that you're using as a primary optic, then you can flip these up should the optic go down battery wise, that kind of thing. But um, I've tested these uh, both during the day. They have adjustment for windage and elevation, as you would expect. And it is really nice to have the fiber in the iron sights as well. Uh, it does really help with, with sort of uh, target acquisition, even during the day. But certainly where they excel, because like a lot of modernized um, fiber optic sights, they run all the way through, even the post at the front and the, the the pinhole sight at the rear uh they they pick up a lot of light and there's no obviously they're, they're not too thick so there's not a lot of, of distance for the the optic to travel or anything like that or the light to travel through the the fiber uh, so they do appear very bright even in low light situations so in in an in, enclosed uh cqb environment something like that i highly anticipate these things excelling uh and will be a good option especially if you're running it because they're quite high as well uh there'll be a good little option for certainly running this alongside like a dye mask or something like that something that's got some uh impediment to you being able to uh, gain a standard cheek weld they're going to be high enough uh, that, that you're still going to be able to look down them and acquire your target they're all aluminium made so uh you don't have to worry about scuffing them or taking anything out of them or anything like that or that they're going to break unnecessarily. Like I say, they're marketed to the more sort of budget end of the market, but they haven't sacrificed any quality that I can see in, in certainly in these iron sights and what I would anticipate to be their other products as well. But we shall see as we go through and continue uh, their support of the channel, which is lovely. It's always nice to have uh, the channel growing and people interested in uh, putting their wares through us. So that's all good. Right, so as I say, a little look inside there. We do have a lot of stuff coming to the channel. 
we have some very exciting developments happening outside of the channel that I'm involved in as well, which I'm going to hesitate to tell you in this video about it because, uh, we're, we, yeah, it's exciting. Certainly if you're here in Cornwall, uh, it's a new Cornish airsoft site opening up and uh, yeah, it's something really, really awesome to look forward to. But that's going to be it for today's video. Uh, thank you very much for bearing with me. Uh, I apologise if the awkward staring and silence uh, got to you at the start of the video. Uh, I've given up, as you can see, I'm now looking everywhere. Everywhere but at the camera. Such is my anxiety. But uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching the channel. Thank you very much for your continued support of the channel. I love every one of you who has subscribed thus far and supports the channel in any way, shape or form. Even just communicating or bad-mouthing me in the comments section. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much, guys. Uh, hopefully we can continue this throughout 2022. And uh, more exciting things to come on the channel, as I say. And I'm, I'm just repeating myself now. What's the point in this? Goodbye!